I am thankful to Dr. Sanjay and the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Sanjay has a tradition of respecting old people, so as a part of that respect, I am invited as one of the old persons. Assumption that these old people also have something to share. I was going through the OER for old persons. Open Educational Resources for Old Persons on the Net. One advice given by the, the participant in that OER program is, old persons always, whenever any invitation comes, they should not refuse and they should attend it. Because it may be a lost opportunity for them to meet their friends. <laughs> so we should not uh, miss these opportunities. I'm very happy that uh, I got this opportunity of meeting all of you and meeting old friends. I am also really thankful to Professor Muhammad Mia. We had the privilege of working together. We have many positive things to remember. That is also, you see, the people working together also, sometimes they only have negative things to remember. But fortunately, we have many positive things to remember. That's why always a pleasure to visit this university. I only wanted to make two observations. You see, I know that uh, Professor Dhanrajan very, you see, the, he is the person, right person, and very fortunate that uh, we have him with us. And the recently edited volume is a great contribution to the OER, published by the COL. And we are also looking forward to listen to his wise advice. But I only wanted to make two observations because with the Indian experience, generally what is happening is, in Indian institutions, so sometimes we are conditioned by our own contest and our own experiences. So sometimes the new developments, uh, we, we are not that positive to the new developments and saying that, no, no, our institutions are different, our contest is different, we may not be able to follow these things, these are all very good things. But my own feeling is, you see, we must look at all these things with open mind. Generally, it is said, in our ideas, we must be very radical. In implementation, we must be very pragmatic. Unless you have radical ideas, you will not be able to make any changes. So that radical idea, even if you are assuming that the online programs or OER, all these things, uh, sometimes may feel that, particularly distance educators uh, in India, Indian institutions, may feel that uh, we are more concerned, still we are using mostly the print medium and all those things, uh, uh, how far these are all relevant to us. But they are certainly relevant to us, as I was telling. Certainly they are relevant to us as a main mode or as a support mode, support for our activities. You see, certainly they are very relevant. We must have that open mind and try to learn from that experience of others and try to see that what is possible in a particular context. So that's why we have to be very radical in our ideas and new approaches and new things. 50 years of ODL, we find that uh, from 1962 to today, 50 years of ODL, still our focus sometimes is uh, mainly on the print mode and all those things. When somebody says that OER will help us to adopt the good materials from other institutions, then the institutions will raise the question, then if we are adapting in material from other institutions, what is that we are expected to do? Then when we say that you have to give additional value or value addition role, we are not very sure of what is that value addition role other than the print material. This is the problem of our institutional understanding and our institutional crisis. So we must try to learn from others, adopt the other practices, others' practices, and see that some pragmatic solutions are found and uh, these uh, days, three days when we are spending time, if we can find some solutions to some of our concerns, I think that is the one of the purposes. My second observation is particularly, I'm very happy that uh, the focus is on the development of uh, guidelines, quality assurance guidelines, because that is the one of the main concerns of uh, education in general and distance education in particular, and I'm very happy. Maybe probably we are looking at these guidelines uh, of uh, OER, maybe from user's perspective, maybe we are looking at from the developer's perspective, maybe we are looking at from institutional perspective, maybe we are looking at uh, student perspective, multiple perspectives of looking at the OER. 
we must be able to integrate them. Sometimes institution may be looking at OER as a policy of reducing the cost. Sometimes the institution may be looking at the OER as a sort of enabling their faculty to concentrate on some other things. Academics may be looking at the OER as a sort of enriching their own experiences, their own learning experiences. Students may be looking at it from a different perspective, multiple uh, see the access to the multiple resources. So we must be able to, the quality assurance effort, the guidelines developing, must be able to integrate these perspectives and develop these guidelines to the institutions, uh, to the faculty, and to the students, particularly three stakeholders, institutions, faculty, and students. How do you integrate it? Sometimes they may clash also. Sometimes you see the quality concerns of uh, developing of the OER may be different from using of OER. These are all related, but you have to integrate all these things. I am sure the experts, uh, Professor Dhanrajan or Paul and you see the Sanjay and these experts, I think have better answers. These are only the questions of a, a layman's concerns. I have expressed some of the layman's concerns. As a person who is associated with the distance education, I will be very, very happy if all the Indian institutions also actively participate, and institutions from other Asian countries particularly, if we can actively participate in this process and learn from these experiences and improve the quality of distance education programs, thereby bring more legitimacy to the distance education programs. I look forward for fruitful discussions in the coming three days. Thank you very much. Deeply humbled by my heroes that I've been reading their work and studying their work, and today I can meet them face to face. Many of them I have been studying under for 10 years online. So I'm very grateful to Sanjaya and to all of you for welcoming me here today. Luckily, you will get bored of my voice later on, so I can keep this short. So, but I do want to say thank you to the teachers who are here today as without you, we are just a group of, I don't know, how can I say, old men's club, but we need you. And I always feel that teachers must be a lifelong student. Keep reinventing your philosophies and your activities, your ideas to suit your students and their future lives. It's a great task. So rather than me stay in England and speak from afar, I think I have my own philosophy of be a model if I think teachers should be a student, then I should study. So I am basically a lifelong student, and I study today, and I will be studying tomorrow, listening to your ideas, learning from you, listening, thinking, reflecting, going away, and changing my mind. So please help me. Now, I don't underestimate the challenges. I was in a conference in Penang last year that we had experts thinking about, can we share one teacher's lessons and share it a thousand times and get a benefit of cost? Those are very contextualized learning the classes of that person's students, can we spread it to other countries? But you have to recontextualize that chunk. Other people were saying we should have it context free so we can share it easily. Context free, that easily to share and reuse. But other people were arguing that it should be 
learning is always contextualized. How come? This is a dilemma that I am suggesting a framework that we can use to overcome this dilemma of context or context free, contextualized. That comes to the deep philosophical difference between open learning and distance education. Because if we take learning, contextualized learning of the student, then, and we transmit that to another class, that is like distance education. We are producing a clone of MIT. And many universities take that approach. And many developing countries want that for their economic development. But there is the other philosophy of open learning, that we listen to the village, we listen to the students, and we honor their own way of learning. And open learning, where we produce farmers who are good at farming rather than make them into professors in the city. So there is a tension between open learning and distance education. So those, we have these two dilemmas of the context free and the contextualized lessons. So it's a great challenge. I think we can manage. That's my plan. So I don't underestimate it. And I'm very grateful for this chance to work with such a, not just powerful, but interesting diff groups of different ideas from who I can learn. So thank you very much, and thank you for this opportunity. Thanks. In this very interesting workshop on open educational resources, and to speak on matters pertaining to quality in this emerging technological innovations. I, I may want to embed what I say uh, in the context of formal, formal education, because that's probably where I think this whole movement should be heading to. I, I noticed my partner somewhere at the back. I didn't realize she was coming here. Uh, okay. she, she, she sits at the back all the time, my wife Sue, uh, and she, she signals to me that either I am clear or I'm not clear, so it's good to have that kind of feedback. As a good distance educator, I, I every now and then observe her. Uh, and uh, whenever I travel to India, especially Hyderabad, Chennai, and Delhi, uh, she says, I got to go with you. Uh, there's no choice. It could be London, Paris, uh, or New York. It doesn't really matter. But India has a special place in, in, in our hearts. And, and uh, she would never let so that you are. Anyway. Right. I, I also, Sanjay, uh, Sanjay recognize the generosity of this, of, of this invitation, since I'm aware that you yourself have contributed so much to the subject of open access and quality through your work at IGNU and more recently uh, your work at UNESCO uh, in the midst of experts such as yourselves. What can I say but add perhaps uh, some words of uh, the voice of, uh, of experience uh, in especially establishing two open universities and managing very hard a culture of quality in those two, two universities. Though open educational resources is not, and maybe this is the time that I should go and sit there. Uh, may I, sir? Please. Colleagues don't mind, I, I, I will sit there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good okay. um. practice in distance education or open distance learning, which also is engaged quite seriously in the production, distribution, utilization, and support of learning content. That there's a core, very strong 
relationship uh, between the tradition of open education uh, practice and open educational resources. I will therefore draw on that experience in the next 20, 25 minutes or so, so that this conversation will have a, have a, have a particular relevance. I, I will, I will, oops, where am I? Uh, could I, could I get you to, I think I got to close that first, yeah, okay, thank you. I will take this conversation through four bits. The practice of quality assurance in higher education. We, if we are talking about open educational resources, we need to embed it in the culture of education generally. I, looking at all of you around here, I had the impression that you are mostly people involved in higher education. Perhaps I'm, I'm, I'm not totally right. There may be some from the uh, school sector as well. But this, they are old paradigms. Now, if you look at the old paradigms, it's about teachers and institutions. It's centered around them. It's centralized. It's hegemonistic. It's a one-size-fits-all experience. It's closed. It's us versus the teachers versus the others. It's quantitative. It's prescriptive. Now, these are the old paradigms. And I'm sure people who are working in Manu will recognize that's how we deliver our education. Young people are saying, hey, hey that's perhaps it's passé. There are some emerging paradigms we need to look at in the context of openness. Learner-centeredness. They're local. It's not centralized. It's not a diktat from the University Grants Commission. It's a response to the local challenge that we are meeting with our young learners. It's differential. It's tailored. It's customized. It's, it's open. Learn anywhere, anytime, any place. Move in any direction. It's collaborative. It's qualitative. It's flexible. And in, 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 if you look at the last one, in the old paradigm, the, the, the constant is the time. The learning is the variable. Uh, and in the new, the, 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 the variable is the, is the time. The curriculum is the constant. There are other things. Oops. So you, you are now looking at, at, at a situation where innovations are shifting the paradigm of measurement of quality. Ah, is this happening? Not to the extent that people like yourselves who are pushing open educational resources to the fore, not to the extent that you want. So in some ways, you may have to respect the old, even as you start challenging with the new. So I would want to then move on to what would be the prospective challenges of quality. Let me, again, I, I think I've taken one slide ahead. But, OK, I, it, it probably is moving. I, I'm trying to manage this, this, this technology while we're talking about technology. So I, I, want to, I want to quickly move on to what would be then the meaning of quality assurance in an OER system. Looking at it, let me, let, me, let me refer to my notes so that I don't, I don't move away. As you get older, your short-term memory is bad. Okay? So I can talk about the old, but I'm not so sure I'm very confident talking about the new without my notes. And I'll keep, try and keep it short, though uh, Prof said I'll have all the time I need. Okay. If, when we talk about the quality assurance in an o, OER ecosystem, Prof. Prasad said there are perspectives. And what are these perspectives? OK. There's a perspective of the, the producer of open educational resources. People like yourselves. People like myself. Then you have the perspective of the user of open educational resources. Then you have an institutional lens, whether it is the quality assurance agencies or the institution itself. Now, these three have other are the basic stakeholders. Now, are there differences in the way they look at it? Perhaps. If you look at guidelines for the producers, I think the Commonwealth of Learning and UNESCO together have done a fairly explicit, maybe prescriptive guideline. I want to show you what the Commonwealth of Learning did, because I'm very proud of the organization. I don't know whether you can read it or not. They had something like eight or nine 
specific items. Paul, I don't know your workshop may capture this. It is or it isn't. It is. Yeah. There, there. Okay, but this is the, the, the producer's lens, and you can't really, you, you, you may want to try and better this, but this has served as for, for many, and th that prescription is from, from the technology to the, the support systems, and ha it has added some value. You may have a, a, a description of this in the paper that's being circulated to you, but certainly co consider this. Consider this in the context of, 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 your, of, your, of your workshops. Then there is, uh, 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 besides, besides that, you also have a, 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 a situation where quality uh, JISC, do you know what the extension of JISC is? Of the, of the UK. They said quality is measured by the, by the, 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 the reputation of the developer of the open educational resources or the institution they come from. And I think uh, in any conversation, folks would say, MIT open courseware. I don't know whether that courseware has any value at all to many of you here. I don't know. Uh, in, in, in terms of working with my colleagues in Penang, they were very, very clear. It's great stuff, but it doesn't fit our needs. So in that context, reputation may be helpful in promoting the institution, but not certainly may, may, may not add a lot of value to your needs. But so context becomes important. Now, JISC says that is a critical element, the reputation of the author and the reputation of the institute. My friend Wayne McIntosh had a slightly different view on this. He says process, not the product, is a reflection of quality. And Wade's explanation is this, you know, before somebody puts some stuff on the web, they would have gone through a series of drafting iterations. And it goes at every step through the process, its quality has to improve before it makes its appearance. And his process perhaps has that kind of uh, uh, inbuilt assurance of quality because peers have, have contributed to this. Now, any one of this, the call guideline, the institutional or individual's reputation, or the process itself. Now, these are at least the current uh, arrangement or, or aspects or perspectives on the way production of OERs is being, being measured. But when it comes to uses, slightly different. Some thousand years ago, uh, a, a, a colleague of mine, Shannon Timmers, and I were involved in work in Hong Kong at the Hong Kong Open University. Being typically Hong Kong, this is free open educational resources. Uh, we said, as a small university, we can't afford huge teams to build courses. Why don't we buy courses from elsewhere? We went to places like IGDO and the UK Open University and said, we want to lease your courses. We want to rent your courses for use in Hong Kong for a price. That's, that is a great difference. For a price. Even Igno said, yeah, we'll char charge you a small amount of money. Meaningless, but small amount. But it, 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 he said, so getting courses was not a challenge. But there were other challenges. And the challenges had to do with fitting curriculum and content to the <coughs> needs of Hong Kong, whether the instructional design fitted our needs, academic standards, technical standards, licensing standards, assessment and examination standards. Importing of content to fit your curriculum. Now, this was further reinforced by a policy dictat from, not a dictat, a policy guideline that came from the Institute of Higher Education Policy in, in, the, in, the, in the States. When they started talking about e-learning in, in the 
2000 in the decade. They said there are some fundamental things you need to observe in terms of using educational resources through the electronic media. What are the benchmarks of support that you could give your students? Now, uh, it has a relevance to what we talk about in terms of open educational resources in a minute. What are the cost development benchmarks you must have? What are the teaching learning benchmarks you have? How about the cost structure benchmarks and the student support benchmarks? Are they relevant with the new innovation? Should we be asking those questions as well during this workshop of yours from a user perspective? So anyway, those would be, would be, would be some key questions from uh, 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 an institutional lens, which is what Dana Raj and Timmers, the Institution of Higher Education Policy, were talking about, the user's lens or the producer's lens. Now, these perspectives matter. Now, we, of course, are very enthusiastic about open educational resources. In many ways, was it Paul you referred to young people and, and having to listen to them just now, you alluded to it. And so, as I was trying to describe this and try and do it in about 15 or 20 minutes, I think almost keeping to the time, I came across a young PhD student. He's from the University of uh, Edinburgh School of Education. Uh, uh, and talking about open educational resources, he said, are you all being naive? Are you being hypocritical as open educators? Important questions. I'm going to leave his thoughts with you. So as you deliberate, you think through this. And, and, and in the context of openness, not the bigger context, at least in terms of, in terms of, uh, in terms of, oops. Okay, first one. The open literature often promotes a paradoxical claim of institutional circumvention alongside an explicit endorsement of the accreditation systems and prestige of established university structures. He is referring to the Stanfords, the Princetons, the Oxfords, the Cambridge University uh, distribution of courses. Think about this see whether it has a resonance at all in the way we deliver. We are going to look at open educational resources and, dis and use them. Second statement he's making. The OER movement tends to make presumptions about the ability of human beings to self-direct in the process of learning, often appearing to assume the innate qualities of autonomy and instrumental rationality. Are we guilty of it? When we say there are literally hundreds of thousands of open educational resources for anybody, whether that person is from Guntur or the person is from Gagnam, you know, the Korean environment, is that assumption right? I, so, so, again, reflect on, on, on this. Third one, the use of open educational resources can be perceived not as a rational improvement to education or a more humane and natural, naturalized form of learning, but as a further refinement in the exercise of power. Is it? Is it? Is it the exercise of power? Are we being hypocritical? Well, those are some things that I thought may have some value in your debate. It's, it's, not the, it's not the geriatrics like me who would ask difficult questions because we are, we are part of the indoctrination process. We have indoctrinated 
a few generations of people in the glories of open education. Open education. Maybe it's time to sit down and ask again. And these questions came to my mind, or the relevance of it, when I started looking at MOOCs. Uh, you start the new innovation, 150,000 students to be managed by one professor who doesn't manage. But of course, that professor makes millions of money, dollars. Let's not fall into the trap. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. It's my pleasure to bring you, it's my pleasure to bring you the best wishes of uh, Professor Asa Kanwar, President Commonwealth of Learning, on the occasion of World Open Education Week. It's very important that we are organizing this event on the midst of Second World Open Education Week. Today is the third day. Uh, and we are very happy that we are working on a topic uh, which is uh, open educational resources and especially uh, looking into the quality issues in open educational resources. Uh, Nothing can be most befitting to celebrate this week, which is celebrated uh, all over the world. Uh, over 150 workshops, events are being organized all over the world uh, in, in, in this week. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we at SEMCA uh, and Commonwealth of Learning has been part of organizing this workshop along with the Manu. And I congratulate first the Vice Chancellor and uh, the Director of Distance Education, Professor Iqbal Ahmad, for taking the initiative uh, to have organized this workshop. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Professor um, uh, Mohammad Mia for being so kind uh, to work with uh, SEMCA and taking forward and helping us take forward to organize this regional event. Um, we have uh, participants from uh, the eight countries that we work. Uh, we, we should have participants from all the eight countries we work. Some of them could not come due to different uh, situations in their, uh, their institutions and the country. But we have representation uh, from uh, five countries uh, in the region. And that makes it very, very significant for this occasion. And along with the participants from uh, uh, Amanu. Uh, making it making it uh, to the events in large number. Um, it's it's very important for me. Uh, uh, we will be talking about uh, OER, all those things today, but uh, to emphasize the presence of dignitaries here uh, to mark this event, uh, the consultation meeting for develop uh, guidelines for OER. I would like to first uh, thank Professor uh, Dato Gajraj Dhan Rajan for kindly accepting to be with us today along with uh, Sue, uh, uh, this uh, workshop, and uh, uh, setting the tone of the workshop by highlighting the importance of quality in the higher education system, and looking at OER and asking question in the light of uh, openness. What should be the kind of thinking that we should look at? One of the very important point, uh, 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 Professor, you mentioned about uh, the challenges of openness. And, and the new directions that are coming uh, in, uh, due to technology. And how do we rethink and reposition open and distance learning in this current scenario? ODL has always been talking about massive numbers. The only difference between uh, the, the current scenario and the previous one is the digital and, and non-digital world. So I think it's very important. The other thing that came up today is also about self-directed learningness. Now, how can, how can students, uh, uh, do the students need guidance or, or can they study on their own? I'm sure the issues that you talked about in your presentation will resonate for the three day and it will be deliberated along with the work that Professor Paul Kawachi uh, has done to prepare for this workshop. We'll be talking about those things that Paul has done for us uh, at length. We'll be working on those work that Paul has already done Many of these materials are already available online. A lot of debates has already happened online that he has worked through. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Paul Kawachi for making his time to be available with us despite his difficulties in the last month. 
and he has been able to contribute. And despite the difficulties that he faced uh, for applying visa six times, he has to apply six times to, uh, to get the visa to be here. Uh, thank you very much for taking all the pains to be here with us. Uh, Professor Prasad has always been a, a guiding force. Many of the activities that at least I do uh, and I think about owes to Professor Prasad's uh, mentoring and guidance. And, and thank you, Professor Prasad, for being always a, a pillar of strength and support uh, to me personally and to Commonwealth of Learning and, and call. Um, we always take, your, take uh, support of you uh, because we also take pride in that Professor, uh, Professor Prasad is also a fellow of uh, the Commonwealth of Learning. Uh, uh, I will fail, fail in my duty if I don't thank all the uh, participants, especially the participants from uh, abroad, uh, those who have made it uh, to this workshop, especially the presenters. Uh, most of you who are going to make presentations on the issues of quality in open educational resources. We are very much thankful to you for being with us today uh, and uh, in the next two days. Um, last but not least, there will be thank you in the end, and, but I may not be there on the last day. Therefore, I would like to say uh, a personal thank you to all the organizers here. And especially, I would like to thank uh, um, the press and media people for their kind coverage uh, of this event um, and making it more open to the world, knowing that the kind of work being done at Manu at, uh, and at Commonwealth of Learning and Senka, especially this is a very significant week that we are celebrating. In fact, this is a celebration of open education uh, uh, and uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I think uh, the kind of engagement that I have been doing with Hyderabad um, it, it, I, I have been feeling always like it has been a second home uh, for me. Recently we did a workshop with uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University. I was there before with Saturn University of Hyderabad and now I am here again. So I think uh, our engagement with Hyderabad has been quite uh, uh, good and I am happy about the kind of hospitality that we always get uh, while we come here. And special thanks to uh, the kind of uh, um, Saul and other things that you have given us, <laughs> I think I think it's 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 beyond our expectation. And thank you very much. And I look forward to this engaging engaging three days here uh, with all of you to develop this guideline, which we expect to come out with a draft uh, after this workshop and make it available digitally for all of all the world people to see and make use of. Thank you very much.